Am I talking? Am I talking or what? I'll talk. I'll go. Right, this is our fifth studio video. Um, it's been quite a long time since we did a, did our fourth one. Um, yeah, I mean, months now, isn't it? Five or six months. Got to be something like that. Yeah. Um, we've just been really busy working on the album and been busy with normal life, really. You know, work, sleeping. <laughs> what kind of exciting things you get to do when you get old, like us. Um, the album's been progressing quite well, actually. We've made quite a lot of progress. Um, in case it isn't obvious, again, we've missed our deadline. Well, not deadline exactly, but self-imposed goal, and it's not going to be released this year. But the album's so close to being finished now that we're confident it will be released in the first half of next year. And we've been talking to, you know, we mentioned that to our label, and you know, it's all all being planned out now. So we've got a definite goal in mind in terms of what we want to finish yet. So what tracks are on the album? Yeah, perhaps we should talk through the, the new tracks because obviously now we know exactly what's going on so the track list is set in stone, all the tracks have got titles um, basically there's 12 tracks on this album um, going through them one at a time uh, the first track's called Why Do We Live um, the second track's When The Stars Align then it's The Statue On The Island is number 3 uh, Part The Ways is number 4 number 5 is Odyssey's End Number six is Howling of the Distant Spaces. Number seven is Between Scylla and Charybdis. Number eight is Time Never Lasts, which you've all heard before, but this is a re-recorded version, obviously. Uh, nine is The Last Redoubt. Ten is Inside the God Mind. Eleven is The Outer Dark. And twelve is the title track, which is obviously called On Strange Loops. Um, I suppose we could talk a little bit about each track in turn, because obviously we're not alike now. <laughs> Uh, what would you say about why do we live without giving too much away? Um, it's like the prelude to the album, isn't it? Yeah. The opening track, sort of setting the scene, really. Yeah. And then it rapidly goes into When the Stars Align, which is a really sort of full on kind of over the top track, isn't it? It's really sort of bombastic and what metaphors to pull in for this. Uh, it's quite hard, isn't it? It's like sort of, uh, it's quite an epic track. Then the statue on the island is a track we've played a little bit of in the studio videos before. There's a little teaser, wasn't there? That's a more sort of straight ahead track and really brutal and you know quite a monolithic track. Um, Part of the ways is um, quite an interesting song. It's a little bit more laid back. It's not quite as fast as some of the other tracks. It's, I wouldn't say it was a mid tempo song, but it's not like a belter like a lot of the others are. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's actually one of the songs we're still yet to finish recording. Yeah, we've got work to do on that. We still got work to do on that one. Um, Odyssey's End, what would you say about that one? The fifth track on the record. It's more of a like, story based one, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of thing. Very much like Awaken Man and Stone or something like that. Yeah, I suppose sort of it thing. is. Yeah. And it's, it's quite a sort of slow track, but it's well, that's a really powerful one, isn't it? Yeah, it's got yeah. a lot of groove on it. A lot of groove on that track. And then after that one, it, the tempo changes up a bit, and we've got. Howling of the Distant Spaces, which is a really full on sort of yeah, yeah. really quite that's when the album starts to get a bit darker, I suppose. You know, that's a really sort yeah, of that's one of the darker tracks of the album, even. Isn't really it? intense, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Intense is the right word. And then we've got, after that, we've got Time Never Lasts. No, we haven't. We've got Between Scylla and Charybdis, which is the fastest track on the record. Which is one we're still got work. And that's another one we're still finishing off. Um, yeah, that's a really quick track. It's, uh, I think it's nearly 280 BPM, and um, the drumming was really fruity on that song. It was really hard to record. Probably the, that and Howling were probably the hardest tracks to record in terms of how much pain it caused <laughs> in the studio. Uh, after that one, uh, Time Never Lasts, which was obviously on the Time Never Lasts EP. That one's, as you know, it's kind of like a quite interesting song. It's quite varied. It's got a lot of melodic elements, even though it's still really fast and extreme, and you know it's got a little bit of experimental stuff in it. Um, then the last redoubt follows that on, which is actually an instrumental track. Um, that's a bit more laid back as well, isn't it? Yeah. And then inside the God Mind, which again was on the time of the last CP, and obviously that's a really dark and sort of ominous and brutal sort of brutal song. Yeah, they've both fully been re-recorded as well. Yeah, they do sound quite different from the EP versions in the sense that they're much better. I mean, they're just like, 
Yeah, everything about it as well, isn't it? Even the performances and everything. Yeah, the EP sounds really sort of crap in comparison to the re-recordings, which is obviously what the whole goal was. Yeah, yeah. And then after Inside the God Mind, there's The Outer Dark, which is a really, really dark sort of experimental track. I'm not going to say too much about that one. Um, and then the title track on Strange Loops, which is... Um, hmm, where to start with that one? I mean, I think that's probably one of the best tracks on the record. It's really... Um, really evocative and it's really really epic it's got lots of variety in the in the sections it's you know yeah lots of different kinds of playing yeah it's kind of in your face and it's got subtle bits and it's you know it's got melodic elements yeah it's really sort of it's kind of similar to tracks we've done before but it's a progression as well yeah as well as having some quite new elements. almost uh, is it amalgamation of them all yeah it's an amalgamation of a few sort of ideas we had and followed through on other tracks, but you know, we kind of felt this time, oh, we can take that idea and run push with it this way further. and push it further. And, and the way the track ends is really, really, really awesome. I yeah, mean, yeah. That's one of the best things we've ever done, I think, musically. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I suppose that's it. I don't want to give too much away. So there's some, there's 12 sort of vague, vague, sort of semi vague descriptions that will just probably annoy everybody. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Q&A part of the video where we answer some questions we've had on Facebook and a few from email. Uh, Mariachi said, Who are you guys listening to these days? Opinions on any new death metal bands? Impressed by anyone? What do you think of Gent? As in the genre. And then they put LOL, which is actually appropriate, I think, given that last part of the question. Yeah, I think we can steer clear of that, as I tend to do with that genre, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I mean, I suppose in that genre, the only band we listen to is Animals, of, Animals as Leaders, really, if you can even call them that. Yeah. I'd say they're a bit more jazz fusion-y, progressive, but... Yeah, um, listening to these days, where we spend most of our time listening to the album, <laughs> analysing it, that's what we spend a lot of our time doing. Um, Saying, change this by 0.05 dB. Yeah. Is that going to make it amazing? Yeah, is that too loud? Yeah. Is that too quiet? What's EQ like on this? <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of that, and we we listen to a lot of Rush. Um, what am I listening to a lot of? I don't know. My own voice. Um, Why well, you like the sound of that? I've, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, really. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really sure what I've been listening to. Uh, I've listened to the new Nile album, which is really good. That's decent. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't call them a new death metal band. Jack Brumbaugh says, What is it like being awesome? So there you go. Um, I figured you'd be better off answering that. Complicated? You know, you get used to it. <laughs> Not, you know, you have to take uh, take the weight on your shoulders, don't you? Not everyone can be, so... Yeah, you got to... You know, take one for the team. Public service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, OK. Um, Joseph Yap says, Thoughts on the new Scythian? Question mark. Who are they? You remember I mastered it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, probably, probably mastering's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've heard it. I, uh, yeah, the new Scythian album's really good. Um, yeah, great album. Really interesting. Good progression from the last one. I really like the track Wargraves with the narration on it, which is... Oh, yeah, I've heard that. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, that's an awesome track. That's one of the best tracks of, you know, the last 12 months, in my opinion. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure what to say. I mean, they're really good. I saw them the other week playing live. They were great, as, they were good great as always. Kira Michelle says, when can we expect a new song to drop? Sorry, Just I misread it. A song, so. A song to drop. Well, there's probably, I don't, I don't know. know. Kylie Minogue. You've probably got that on vinyl upstairs. I haven't got Kylie Minogue oh, on vinyl. Mean anything, I've got it on CD. So well, we just need an MP3 and we can <laughs> and put on strange loops and it can be Kylie. <laughs> you seed it to a few torrent sites yeah. to really annoy people. Maybe Rick Astley would be more appropriate. Probably, yeah. Yeah, but being serious for a second, uh, a new song is probably not going to drop till next year because we don't want to reveal our hand too early and there's the chance that we'll change the bloody mix again if we drop a new Listen song. To it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Woodward says, What is the sickest riff like ever? Well, let's not there? choose our own. We can assume that all the bass parts are sick. Yeah, well, they're, they're certainly. <laughs> I are. would say that compared to Alex Webster, but I can pretend. <laughs> and I am awesome. So, <laughs> so you've got half of it covered. Um, yeah, so what is the sickest riff like ever? Frantic disembowelment, is it? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, oh, that's a pretty damn sick riff. All the way. You pick any of the riffs out of that song. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say, all the way through. Yeah, just sick take your song pick. more like. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know really. I suppose kind of a corpse have a lot of rifts I'd consider really sick. You know, uh, I've left the best best till last here. Chaos Crumpet, or AKA Wesley Howell, has said, Is Rain a Santa Claus? Spill the beans, we know it to be true. Oh, well, might find out in a month. Under a month, oh. yeah, I've so. got to go, I've got something to do. <laughs> <laughs> you're busy. I wonder why you've been so busy recently. Uh, yeah, well. Been loading up that sleigh in your garage with all those presents. Uh, yeah, so watch out, Wesley, you'll find out at uh, uh, midnight on Christmas Eve. I'll come down chimney in my studded underpants. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> and my noddy hat. <laughs> Okay, so we have some drumming questions by the looks of it. Kira and Michelle, I honestly can't wait for you guys' new material. I have two questions. Uh, one, how has the drum track been? What kind of set are you guys using? I ask this because the drums are amazing. And a lot of the time I hear people say that you don't record but program drums, Mr. Macy. I wish. Program. I bloody wish we programmed the drums. I program all the drums. To answer the question, what kind of set are we using? Do you want to show? Da -da -da. That's all programmed. There, there they are. Yeah, that's my drum kit with loads of bits missing. But um, All the program bits. Yeah, yeah. The beaters and the sticks, aren't they? That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use, um, what is it? Premier, a really old Premier APK kit. It's well old, isn't it? Black. It's from about 1982 or something. Um, it's been in the band as long as we have. Yeah, well, it was old when we bought it in '96 in our other band, and I've just added to it over the years, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was originally a three piece kit with a kick, four piece kit, sorry, with a kick, um, three toms, and we added a snare, and then I've just gradually built up bits to it and added more toms. And, I thought it was going to be a, I've used the same brush for 18 years, he's had nine <laughs> new handles and ten new heads, it's a joke. <laughs> it should have been. <laughs> well, it's got not, it's pretty much close to that. It's not the best kit in the world, but because I trigger the kicks, uh, who cares what the kicks sound like, and they actually sound alright considering, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they sound pretty decent. We haven't mic'd them up for ages. Um, uh, Snare-wise, I use a Pearl um, Ultracast snare, which is an aluminium snare. Um, the reason we use an aluminium snare is because it's a really good mix of the sound of a wood snare and the sound of a metal snare so it's not as rattly as a metal snare yeah. and it's not as hollow sort of sounding and I don't know not thin as a wood snare but I don't know a wood snare's got a certain tone and it's not quite the one we want not quite what we wanted so the aluminium snare was sort of the best of both worlds really use a lot of symbols if you show me that show me the symbols again mm -hmm. yeah loads of symbols from all sorts of different makes um spending quite a lot of time on messing about with them yeah, working out which ones we wanted. Yeah, a lot of Sabian stuff, a lot of Zildjian ones, um, a few posty symbols as well. Um, we just picked the symbols based on how they sound, we didn't really have any we, agenda in terms of We go of through plenty, yeah. until we find the right one. As we said before, we went through 20 ride symbols when we were choosing the ride and we ended up with a posty one, which was which is fucking brilliant really. Um, what other gear do I use? Um, that isn't exactly the same setup as I used on the record. Um, at the moment I'm trying out some new Aquarian heads, but on the album we had some FN heads and I was using Deacon triggers on the tops. Uh, but I don't use those triggers anymore. Uh, not a lot else to say really, I use Axis A longboard pedals, the Europe, Europe versions, and depending on what I'm doing I either use head mounted triggers or... I used to use the Axis E kits, but I don't use those anymore, I just use the head mounted triggers generally now. That's about it really. Uh, sticks, let's have a look, what sticks do I use? Oh, there you go. Vader Concert, they're like a much bigger 2B, but they're not sort of ginormous. They're decent, they've got nylon tips, but it's the shape of the tip that's the important thing. Um, we spent a lot of time again testing sticks and finding one that sounded great on all the cymbals and on the snare, and those were the best ones. And they feel nice in the hand, they're not too heavy. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't really know what to say. Gibraltar Rack, that's been beaten to death as well. Um, mics on the drums, we use a lot of uh, Octava mics, some road mics as well, a couple of Shaw mics. Yeah. It's nothing outrageously expensive, it's just kind of bog standard stuff. Yeah, it's all in the playing. Yeah, and we definitely don't program our drums. <laughs> no. Uh, drumming was the, you know, it's always been the thing that we have to rehearse the most and to be honest, I'm, I haven't been playing drums for at least six months now and it's been a really nice you know, experience. Re relief to have a rest from having to do glass beats every day for hours. Constantly practicing double kick, I mean, I'm really happy that the drums come out on the album and it was worth all the blood, sweat and tears, but now it's time to have a little rest. Rest, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not the kind of thing I could do 24-7, 365. It's a physical toll as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
Anything concerning blast beats, Oliver Home asks? Oh, uh, what, what does that mean? Is that... Does he Just anything concerning it. I can reveal that on any album there are blast beats. Oh, that's too much. Quick, turn this video <laughs> off. I suppose blast beat wise on the new album we've done... We've done most of the kind of blast beats that you can really do, I suppose. You know, lots of single kick blast beats that are offbeat. Lots of offbeat blast beats with double bass underneath. Lots of onbeat blast beats on single kick. Then lots of onbeat blast beats with double kick. And then we've had um, lots of sort of lots of playing where it's been like left hand left hand leading, and then the right hand's off the beat line, which is a bit unusual. And on inside the god mine, there's a little bit where there's a blast beat in seven eight, and these you know the hands and the right foot are playing playing the blast, and then the left foot's doing like a a groove pattern in sevens, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that was a really hard bit to play. Kind of inspired a little bit by some of the stuff Derek Roddy does in Serpent Ri Serpent's Rise, but obviously at a slightly faster tempo. And uh, for us, it was a kind of new thing to do, so that was pretty cool to put in. Yeah, it's, it's only like a bit of playing on the hi-hat, really, so you don't really hear it that well, but it's still a cool idea in that section. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Uh, uh, otherwise, blast beat-wise, I don't know, what else have we done? I mean, just lots and lots of blast beats. Yeah. Yeah, the blast beats on this album sound great. They sound better than a lot better than on other albums. Yeah, yeah did loads of practice for the drumming. Um, <clears throat> I suppose one of the biggest differences on this album was pretty much all of the blasting was on one foot, apart from a few bits that are on beat, where I find it a bit more comfortable to do it on two feet for whatever reason. It just sounds a bit better. But I'm technically capable of doing it all on the one leg now. But it gave it a bit more of a frantic feel, I thought, on the faster songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've always thought that. Yeah, and it was also a bit more of a challenge, like between Silent the you know, 280 or whatever. It's really sort of really stretching playing those bit, those blast beats on the one leg, and just the way the song goes on and on and on. And then at the end, there's no relief because there's that double double kick section. And then it's just like, <coughs> yeah, that was a good challenge. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just blasted out for the foreseeable future. <laughs> yeah. Tommy Coyle has asked, favourite stroke most personal parts of Mithras songs, old or new? Inspirations, mental imagery, what keeps you guys going? So, over to you, Rainer. Favourite's difficult. Yeah. Because, I mean, different parts. It's like, what's your favourite band? I got that ask, I start today, what's your favourite band? It's like, hello. It all depends on what mood you're in or what, you know, what you like listening to at the time. Yeah, it's an impossible question, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I suppose, for me, uh, I've already sort of talked about what my favourite parts on some of the songs that we've already released are. I really like parts, some of the parts on Worlds. I like parts on all of our albums, really. All the albums have got bits that I like particularly. Yeah. I like the bit at the end of As The Wind Blows on Legions. Uh, I like some of the guitar solos in Sirens, particularly on Worlds. On Shadows, there's, you know, leads I really like. The ones in the title track, for example. I always enjoy playing um, behind. Yeah, it's a good track to play. Yeah. I don't know what I'd say my favourite for singing was. Beyond the eyes of man. <laughs> That's probably the most personal one. Yeah. Yeah, very difficult. It's like saying, which one of your children do you love the most? Yeah, huh. that's easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really enjoy playing some the newer songs. Yeah, I think... I think our new album's got some bits on it that would definitely, you know, they'd be probably be ahead of the things we've mentioned so far, in terms of, you know... Favourite type. Yeah, the kind of yeah. feeling we get often, because we've worked on them so much. And yeah, yeah. I mean, on Strange Loops, and even uh, When the Stars Align as well. Yeah, they're great songs, aren't they? Yeah. Really so, enjoyable to play as well. And so, inspirations, mental imagery, what keeps you guys going? Well, inspirations... Because people say, you know, they're like, oh, you know, why do you... Why'd you do it? Why'd you make that kind of music? And why'd you do it? And it's just like, because we can, damn you! Because we can! We enjoy it, I don't yeah. know. It's sort of quantify why we enjoy it. It's kind of uh, rewarding in its own sense, isn't it? Yeah, but it's challenging as well, though, isn't it? It's, it's completing that challenge. And, you know, it, the nature of the band has always been to push ourselves. We've always tried to improve yeah. on everything we're doing and improve on our skills and our sound and everything. It's and I think that keeps us going. And it's been it's always a challenge to sort of try and come up with something we were more into than we were before or you know, yeah. push push the boat out in a different direction slightly, but you know. I suppose we try and please ourselves if anything. And we're not we're not I don't think we're a band that we're scared of trying something. 
without you know without needlessly experimenting with things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I suppose inspirations. I suppose on the new album we've had a lot of sort of science and physics in the concept, and you know, lots of ideas there. And like you said, there's a lot of spiritual ideas which we've always written about. And time as well. Yeah, a lot of stuff about time, which obviously ties back into the physics stuff. And the fact that we're getting old. Yeah, you look so tired, man. I know, and old. <laughs> I didn't say old. Wisdom upgrade, mate. Wisdom upgrade. That haven't we really? Mental imagery. Yeah, I don't know. What would you say for that? I don't know. I think that's difficult, particularly if we talk about this album. When we talk about the band, I suppose we had a really strong idea of what we were going to have on the album cover, didn't we? We knew when we went on our long, long, long search for the album cover. God, yeah. We had a really good idea of, without knowing exactly what we wanted, we had a very strong idea of what we didn't want. Yeah. And therefore, what we wanted. Yeah. So it made it a very frustrating something search. abstract that wasn't an elephant in a bowler hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For example. With a briefcase. Yeah. But yeah, that was quite interesting. That kind of revealed the kind of imagery. But we can't really go into that without ruining the surprise of what the cover is. Oh, that won't ruin the surprise. Well, if it, anybody who thinks it's going to be an elephant in a bowler hat with, with a briefcase is very much mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's. Uh, God, it'd be great if it was now. Yeah. <laughs> There's still time to change it. <laughs> I'm asking him to paint it again. I, on ironic loops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, UK tour possibilities and potential session musicians lined slash eyed up. But also, Grandfather, Nebulous, any possibilities of any live dates in support of Unstrange Loops? So, at the, <laughs> so answering the questions in logical order, um, obviously we won't be able to do any live dates if we haven't got any potential session musicians lined up, so let's get to cover that first. So, to answer that question, have we got any potential session musicians lined up? Yes. We do, which is uh, really cool to report. We um, put out a call a while ago, a few times, saying we were looking for a drummer, and we had quite a we had quite a lot of people get in touch this time, more than we've ever had before, because this is a long running saga for us, having to try and find a live drummer. Um, we had quite a few people send us videos, but as usual, the number of people who sent us a video was far less than the number of people who emailed us boasting that they could easily play all the music. So unfortunately, that's the way it works in the real world. <laughs> So we had quite a few people get in touch. Um, we're still waiting for their videos. We're still waiting for their videos, yeah. They still owe us those videos. Yeah, I know. I, I want to see them play it easily. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the great news is we've got a new live drummer in the band now. And um, he's uh, a guy called Ant Dean. And he used to be in the band Basement Torch Killings, who are kind of like a brutal death metal band. He used to be their drummer. And now he's going to be playing with us. So we've been rehearsing with him for how long now? About a couple of months. And... Um, We've been practicing quite a lot of old tracks. Start, we've just recently started practicing some new tracks. And yeah, it's going really well so far. There's obviously still a lot of work to do because it's been so long since we played live and you know the new material is challenging and everything. But yeah, we've, we've mapped out a set list. Yeah, the we know where potential set lists. We kind of know where it's going now, don't we? Yeah, it's really interesting actually because I mean we've had some really good drummers in the band who've played live with us but it's interesting with Ant because he's got kind of like a, a slightly different approach to all the other drummers we've had so it's cool in a way because it means we're going to be able to play songs that we weren't able to play before yeah. which will make it more interesting especially from our point of view And some songs before that we struggled with to get the right feel on Yeah Whereas now I bet coming across better Yeah, so that's really cool and of course we've still got Tom Hyde from South Panetum. he's still our live rhythm guitarist. So he's playing with us as well. So we've got a full live lineup. So as to whether we're... I'm singing and playing on bass though. Oh yeah, UK tour possibilities. So yeah, we're hoping to play some UK dates next year. Um, basically anyone interested in booking us get in touch via the contact page on our website or via our Facebook message service. And Belgium will welcome you with open arms. Well, that'd be great because we'd love to play in Belgium. Yeah, I'd love to go to Belgium. 
Chris MT, let's talk turkey gentlemen. What's it going to take to get you across the pond? Northeast USA mini tour. And also Christopher William asks about playing the USA. So oh, yeah, they tie together quite well. Playing the USA, people are constantly saying to us, we'd love for you to come over and play in the USA. That's really cool. Um, we'd like to play the USA as well. But as most people aren't aware, for a British band to go and play in the States, you can't just fly in as a tourist with all your instruments, turn up and play a date and then fly back. You know, the US Immigration Service don't allow that. Uh, if we were to do that, there'd be a large chance our instruments would be confiscated and would be sent back, or we'd just be turned back at the boarding gate in Britain. Um, so you have to have a work visa to be able to go and play in the States. To get a work visa, you have to go and attend a face-to-face -face interview at the American Embassy at 8 in the morning in London, and you have to pay a lot of money. So for a band of our stature, it probably cost nearly £1,000 to have this interview, and the chances are we would be denied a visa as we're not famous enough. They only seem to give bands that are pretty significantly famous work visas to play in the States. And if you have a little Google search on this problem, you will see that it affects many, many bands. Ironically, if you're an American band, you can just come over and play and there's no problem. But that's uh, US immigration policy, so thanks for that one. So, given all that, the chances of us playing in the States are minimal to zero at the moment. So, unfortunately, don't ask us if we can play in the States, because we'd love to, but we just can't. <coughs> what's the Canadian laws? Are they the same? I don't know, I think it's probably a bit easier. Yeah, so yeah. playing Canada. So everyone would have to come to... Playing Canada and sneak across the border. Don't, yeah, don't I don't fancy trying it. No, on a moose. On a moose. Dressed as a Mountie. <laughs> Imagine the most inconspicuous costume, just as a Maui. No, I'm a Maui. We'll go back to Canada then. Well, I'm going to America. <laughs> there you go. That's how we're going to get. That's how we're going to break America. Grandfather Nebulous has asked this question a few times, so apologies for not getting round to this. But he's interested in vocal techniques, vocal effects, and equipment. So, if you'd like to handle that end of things. Uh, right. Well. Vocal techniques? Start with the techniques. Go on, give it in the order he's asked the question. Techniques, okay. I was going to do it the other way around, so make it more confusing. <laughs> uh, vocal techniques, um, that's a bit difficult to uh, really quantify. I use a lot of lung power, mm. so I'm a pretty loud singer rather than quiet, as you find with a lot of death metal singers. Do you want to right? give us an example of it? Not really, no. Well, go on. <laughs> no, I don't just shout it like a rain. Just, just shout, I'll make it, I'll edit it and make it look cool. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, on it. Put some vocal effects on it. Yeah, go on. <laughs> That's not even as loud as normal. No. <laughs> it didn't warm up. There's no technique, it's just his voice. Yeah, I mean, the thing, things I do that I concentrate on doing is pronouncing words. I concentrate quite harshly on that. Yeah. Because it's very easy to get words really mumbly, especially in it, when it's that type of style. I'm not a fan of death metal bands where you just can't hear what someone's saying and it's just, you know. Yeah, indecipherably low yeah. or mumbly or. Yeah, I mean, you can sing low and still hear what someone's saying. Yeah, you definitely worked a lot on this album, working on the intelligibility of all the lyrics and yeah. getting everything to cut through. And that's something that has grown over time as well, though. Yeah, the, the articulation on the new album's great, isn't it? Yeah, 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 but yeah, that's exactly the thing, making sure the articulation is. And I try to do that live as well, all the time. One thing that was interesting actually that we haven't really talked about much was when we did we demoed up this entire record, didn't we? And we demoed up all the vocals, so we've actually recorded all the vocals for this album twice or even three times in some cases. When you demoed them up, the vocals were actually really low, weren't they? They were really deep. Yeah, yeah. Everything was like you know, right down there in the you know, A sharp, B sort of register all the time. But interestingly, when we did the recording, it all came up, didn't it? You know, it sounded much more sort of exciting and more in your face and yeah, it was I mean, quite an interesting change, I thought. Yeah, I think part of the reason for that was obviously I had quite a long break from it anyway, and obviously over time, obviously while you're practicing the drums, I can concentrate on thinking about yeah, thinking about the way it's sung and the patterns and just little nuances I can add to it. The same with the bass player, really, and add a lot to it, and you end up bringing it up and it ends up with a lot of character doesn't it? You get yeah. To and then you have to start thinking about what bits you brought up too much and then... Yeah, we did down. have a bit of a battle with that. It's always that, oh, which bits are the best bit, you know. Yeah, and, and we do, you know, with the singing, it's really as picked to bits, you know, even down to words, single words. 
you know, how would how are we gonna do that word? Yeah, we don't record it all in one take. Um, you know, like most people, we put it. You know, we do lots of different lines and put them together and pick different lines and pick the best bit. Yeah, some some bits work when you do it as one chunk. Yeah. Especially more ranty parts. If I'm doing. Yeah, you get into a flow, don't you? And it just. Yeah, yeah, and it works. And then other bits, it's good to just break it up. You know, it saves you. Especially as well if you can do a bit a few times and then we can go back and cherry pick bits. That's always the best approach. Yeah. 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 So, equipment then. So, what equipment are you using? Well, the mic I used was SM7B. It's what we use to record the uh, vocals and I use in the studio, live or whatever. I use a 58 or whatever. So, I use 58. The 7B sounded good, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, we used to use um, a valve mic, which sounded really good on the vocals. I think that's what we used on the last album. But on this album, we, uh, as the vocals got more sort of articulate and more forceful and more in your face, that mic was just too much. Yeah. Or as the SM7B just has got more of a classic sort of vocal sound. Yeah. I mean, I've read stuff about it that, you know, that was the mic that Michael Jackson used on Thriller. It was the mic that James Hetfield used on quite a few of the Metallica albums. You know, and I don't think anyone can argue about the vocal sound on those albums. <laughs> no, so, no, so no. you know, we were kind of thinking, we just want something that sounds great, and yeah. uh, and it did. And it did, yeah. It was worth the money. Yeah, we use what good the gear did we use? We use a, um, a valve preamp, don't we, as well, that the vocals go through on the way in. Yeah, which warms them up. Just warms them up a little bit, but it's not very noticeable. In the mix, uh, what do we have? We've got a bit of EQ, a bit of a little bit of compression. Uh, a bit of limiting, perhaps a de-esser, depending on whether there's you know too many explosives in the vocal, and that's about it really. Yeah. Yeah. Vocal vocal effects. It's just reverb here and there. Maybe a bit of delay on the end of words. Not sure yeah, it's just standard stuff really. Yeah, I think I think there might be a bit of chorus on one of the parts on the new album, just to thicken it up and make it sound a bit more watery. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know which part you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else other than that. I mean, it's not, it's not like we record the vocal and then pitch shift it. The sound of it doesn't come together until we've put eight million effects on it. It just is what it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. as with everything, we try and concentrate on getting good takes. Yeah. Yeah, the best take we can get, and then you minimise the manipulation of it. Yeah, it's the same with the guitars and the bass and the drums. We, the sound of what we want is ninety percent there when we play the instruments. Yeah. So it's not like it doesn't all have to be cooked up in the mix completely, you know. Obviously, the mix is quite a complex mix, but it's more about refining what's there and chopping away which bits of it we exactly. don't want, rather than adding something in that never existed. Yeah, yeah. Adding something's always way more difficult than chopping something out. Yeah, I suppose that's it on the vocal techniques. There isn't any, basically. <laughs> yeah, no techniques here. Yeah. <laughs> what vocal techniques do you use? None. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did you do any special warm-ups? You used to sing Painkiller, didn't you, at gigs? That was quite entertaining backstage. Oh, yeah. Got us all just, got us all like uh, yeah, yeah. in an irate mood. Oh, yeah. Pain. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah. As far as I can even sing that, yeah, I you can't now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem getting old, your voice just gets deeper and deeper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I think that's it. After all, it was Barry White next time. Yeah. Or JD Sumner, or whatever he's called. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs>